we go. So we're going to do um, sort of the nitty gritty of the cellular processes involved in uh, absorption. So really I'm going to blow up one of those cells, those epithelial cells from the, um, from the villus. So if we kind of blow them up and I'm sure you'll recognise this diagram because you will have already no doubt watch the selection, selective reabsorption video. If you haven't, I can recommend it. So this is a single cell. Obviously, uh, it's joined to other cells just the same. And you might have a goblet cell. So, what are you looking at? You're looking at the lumen here. This is the uh, epithelial cells. That wasn't me. Um, and these cells have microvilli. Remember microvilli? So these are cells on the villus, these are microvilli, these are foldings of the cell membrane and their role is to increase surface area. And I think if I was writing this in an exam, which luckily I'll never have to do again, I would put also for absorption. And these cells, I've not got room oh, to put them in there, are mitochondria. And their role is to provide ATP for active transport. Thanks to Dr. Schofield for the background noises and apologies to Marcus for his watching. <coughs> so, remember our sort of overall structure of the villus, we've got the lumen, we've got the epithelial cells and underneath that we then have our capillaries. I'm seeing a lot of diagrams where there's no gap between the capillary and the Uh, on the internet where there's no gap between the capillary and the cells but you know I'm pretty much thinking there must be a basal channel in there somewhere. Anybody shed any light on that? Sorry? Basal channels underneath the uh, might underneath the epithelial cells of the villi? Yes. Sure. <laughs> Everybody's just going oh yeah whatever. <laughs> yeah if you say so whatever you're babbling about now that'll be okay. <laughs> so Oh, the good lord. So here we've got the capillary. It's all right, I'll just make it up and <laughs> sound, try and sound convincing about it. So, in the, uh, to do absorption, obviously you're going to need some protein carriers. So, this is my protein carrier here. And the main thing that we're going to be absorbing because the key component of your diet these sort of staple foodstuffs are all starch based. It's going to be glucose. So, and glucose, as you recall from selective reabsorption, is co transported into this cell with sodium ions. So, this is co transport. through an intrinsic protein and we're talking therefore facilitated diffusion on the other side we've got something a bit more active going on so on the other side going into this basal channel which I've just made up, potentially. We've got 
a sodium potassium pump so this is active transport again why do we bother doing that that seems an awful lot of faffing what we're doing here is we're maintaining low sodium ion concentration inside the cell and that's important because that keeps the diffusion gradient so it maintains the diffusion gradient from the lumen to the cell. So that means that sodium ions will keep moving in and every time they move in they will co-transport a molecule of glucose. So it doesn't matter how little glucose you've got here, you can always bring it in because you keep moving the sodium in. Uh, then of course we've got low to high concentration for the salt and we remember that the membrane is pretty leaky to potassium, they'll probably just leak back out again. Um, and then we can move everything in again by facilitated diffusion into the capillary. So once they're in the basal channel they'll be in a nice high concentration and we'll be going facilitated diffusion into the blood. Now that's not the full, oh no, there's more. So more to say about these, uh, these microvilli and uh, transport because if you remember, well you most don't remember, but I said that there'd be glucose, amino acids, but there'd also be these dimers, there'd be things like um, maltose and sucrose and you know if you take sugar in your tea it's pretty much going to skip unchanged all the way through to the uh, ileum. When it gets to the ileum, remember from core membrane structure that we said that not only were some of these proteins receptors which we've come across, we have proteins that are transport proteins and some of them are enzymes. And these are the enzymes that break down uh, and do the final bit of hydrolysis of the dimers. So they could be and of course they're only going to be one of them because enzymes are specific. So you've got enzymes to break down maltose, they're called maltase. Sucrose to break down sucrase. And lactase to break down lactose. And you should know what those the constituents are. So maltase is going to yield glucose, sucrase is going to leave glucose and fructose lactase, glucose and galactose and of course if you're going to break down a dipeptide you will need a dipeptidase and they'll break those down into amino acids. <coughs> so big surface area not only does it give a big surface area for absorption so you can have more carriers but you also got big surface area so you can have more enzymes on it. So Next time you eat a Malteser, you'll be able to think about it skipping through, unchanged all the way down to the ileum, and then being absorbed. How lovely, Maltesers. Mm.